All right, once again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Staging an On-Base Upgrade. Our Navient Software Support staff is Chris Crowley, Greg Schmidt, Jennifer Hinklinet, Jennifer Siegel, Josh Gearink, and Gentry Beaker. And the webinar this morning is hosted by Josh and myself. Hello. Uh, as per regular procedure, our audio line is muted. If you do have questions throughout this webinar, feel free to type them into the questions window in your webinar panel, and we will address them at the end of the webinar. Uh, and also, once the webinar is over, there is a survey that will pop up, so please complete that and let us know how we're doing. This morning's agenda. We will be talking about test system considerations prior to an upgrade, refreshing the test system, upgrade considerations, and the current software versions. So test system consider considerations. Periodically, you may wish to refresh your test system as it drifts away from production. And the perfect time to do this is just before and upgrade. And this will maximize the effectiveness of your testing because you obviously want to test as close to a real life situation as you can. So just before doing an upgrade, if you take a, 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 a refresh of your test system so that it matches production, then that will give you the best possible result. So how to refresh the test system? There are several different methods available to you. These are the three most common, well, really two. The first one, side-by-side -side comparison, uh, which is where you pull up the config tool on your production system, and you pull up the config tool on your test system, and you set them side-by-side, -side, and you compare each of the settings one by one. If you have very little drift, very little difference between your two systems, this can be done quickly, can be practical. Uh, but, of course, the downside to that is that if you are not 100% sure of where those differences are, the risk of missing a setting uh, or supplemental information is pretty high. Um, so we don't generally recommend this method, but it is available to choose it. Uh, and the state of your database and your disk groups at that point is all of your test data remains as it is. Another method is to use the configuration migration utility. This is a relatively recent utility that is offered by Highland. It is free. Uh, it will assist you with doing this refresh in that it will change some of the database level things for you. So the install ID, the onbase.id files uh, will get updated, and the disk group paths will be updated as well. Uh, the downside to this tool is that not all settings are migrated, and there are some pretty uh, significant limitations. So it's something that can be extremely useful for a very specific type of environment, uh, but whether or not it's good for you will be determined by your particular module usage. Uh, just for the record, the initial uh, intent behind this utility was to allow you to create a temporary backup of production or a temporary uh, production environment to test a specific change, which you would then promote back into production. Uh, but it does come with an extra feature that allows you to break the connection between that, uh, that temporary environment and establish it as a permanent test environment. The third option, uh, which is the most common, which is to take a backup of your production database and restore it as a test environment. Uh, the good side to that is that all settings are guaranteed to match production, so you will have zero drift. The downside is that, of course, all settings are exactly like production. So there are some things that you will need to change to repoint them away from production so that you are uh, isolating your environment. Uh, and, oh, and I did forget to mention with the configuration migration utility, uh, the state of that environment is no documents in the system. And that is currently the only way to get a test environment established with zero documents. So if you want a clean environment, this is the tool that will get you there. Uh, so 
back to the production database backup, again, you're going to have data in your system, but this time it's production documents. Um, so uh, there's a little bit involved in that as well. Okay, sorry, there we go. <laughs> All right. Configuration migration utility uh, has a number of post-migration actions. So after you run the utility, uh, or actually uh, at this point during the process of running the utility, we'll have to engage Highland to activate the system so that you can use it. Uh, I believe it's a, uh, just the first time you have to activate it, and from then on you can, you can use it. Uh, but that does need to be done, of course. Uh, and then as you run through the utility, you'll break that link to production so that you can establish it as a permanent test environment. And then once you've run it, then you'll need to reapply all the user group memberships and security keywords because these are things that are not migrated. And that is done intentionally uh, because of the, uh, the thought behind the original intent of the utility here, um, is that you, know, you don't want uh, production level security going into your test environment. Uh, so they intentionally do not migrate those settings. Uh, also, there are a number of other settings that are not migrated, again, intentionally. Uh, and I highly recommend that you read the on-base configuration migration utility article that is published out on the Navient Cafe for the details on those limitations. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy article and goes into a lot of detail about all the little things that you need to consider. Uh, depending on your environment, uh, if you have workflow, you may want to reapply the workflow notification recipients uh, and do an export or do an export import, uh, and also reassigning workstation registration. If, on the other hand, you go with the production database backup method, then once you have restored the backup, uh, the post-restore actions that you take there since we are now referencing production documents, you're going to need to copy your disk group files over to your test environment. If you, depending on how you set up your share, you may not need to recreate the file share permissions, uh, but you may. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, and then update all the onbase.id files as well. Now one thing to note here is that although uh, we tell you to copy over your disk group files, you certainly don't have to copy all of them. If you have a lot of data in your system and you really don't want to spend the time copying over you know, volumes 1 through 200 and you're on volume 240 or what have you, you can just copy really the last one or two the active volumes in each of the disk groups. We do recommend, however, that you always copy over all of system documents. And the reason for that is because that is where all of your bitmaps, your system bitmaps and icons are stored and the um, E -form? E -form e -form, yes, e-form templates. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so uh, also we need to engage Highland again and because the on base dot in the install ID in the database is not upgraded uh, automatically because we're not using the utility, we need to get Highland in so that they can change that for us. It's very quick and easy. Just they have to do it because anytime you touch a database, Highland wants to be involved. Uh, then once that is done, we can upgrade all the disk group paths and if you have DDS, the DDS settings, to point to those new files in the path. So that redirects the database so that it's no longer looking at the production document, it is now looking once again at the test document where you want it so that when you bring a new document, it's going to the right system. So you will also have to update all of your input path sources, so sweep, cold, dip, any of that stuff. Uh, you'll want to update or disable your scheduled tasks and your workflow timers. You'll need to update any scripts, script hooks, external data sets, and external autofill queries that have uh, pointers to production places. And any web service calls in your workflow configuration, you'll want to watch out for those too, because that can catch up. Uh, and then we will also need to reapply the test license certificate. Uh, sometimes this is required to reactivate the system, uh, which may or may not be necessary depending on your situation, but, uh, but we do need to reapply the, the license certificate anyway uh, in order to put you back into compliance for your licensing.
So, and then also uh, some optional items are to update your user form path, update your user group memberships, your workflow notification recipients, and your and reassign your workstation registration licenses. So testing. Once you have refreshed your test environment and you're ready to do your upgrade, then there are a number of things that you can test side by side uh, on, a, on an end user workstation so you can have both a production application and a test application on the same machine. So anything that is deployed with a click once application, so your app enabler, your report services, and your Unity client, those types of things can exist side by side because the click once deployment method creates an instance of the application for, uh, for each deployed application. So the SIG client also, you can have a production and a test client side by side. So you can have the old version and the new version. Uh, and the web client. If you are sufficiently different in your current version versus your new version, the ActiveX controls will change. So as long as you have both of the ActiveX controls, you'll, you should be able to connect to both environments. The things that do not play nicely with multiple versions our desktop, disconnected scanning, scanning, <laughs> any third-party integration components. So that would be your Outlook integration, uh, your Office integration toolbars, anything that plugs into a third-party application, uh, and anything that comes off of a common installer. Those things you get one and one only. So if you're wanting to test those, then either you will have to designate a person is a tester and they can only access the test version of those applications or you will set up a test workstation that someone can go to to perform that testing. So at this point now you've done your testing or at least the testing is planned and you're working on it and it's time to start looking at the upgrade itself. Uh, and what we've got here are the two primary methods that we've seen uh, for doing an upgrade. We've got our all-at-once method, the whole pie, and our staged upgrade, little bits of the pie. Uh, you'll hear this referred to, and if you check out on uh, Highland's community site, you'll see IPUP uh, tossed about. Uh, the incremental parallel upgrade process. Uh, we'll be discussing both of these in just a little bit. Now, the all-at-once method works great for small implementations, uh, uncomplicated implementations. If, you know, so, so long as it's not going to overwhelm you or your end users uh, to go in and just suddenly overnight everybody's on the same system, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, and just looking at the steps, you know, this is probably the method you've all used. Uh, what have you done? Well, you've upgraded your test environment. You've tested through tests, always the first two things you do. Uh, once you've confirmed the test is okay, and you've documented any little quirks you found and what you've done to get around them, great. Then you go about, you upgrade your production system, possibly during the day, possibly at night, uh, possibly over a weekend. In any case, there's always a chance that this is going to result in downtime just because Users are going to be in the system. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, users can be in the system, uh, and well, you need them out for that upgrade period. Uh, and then you, as the administrator, and your dedicated team of individuals get to go through and perform a superficial test of the whole system as best you can before everyone else comes back in so that you can decide, are we going to go ahead with this, or do we have to do some sort of emergency rollback? Finally, step four, respond. All right, it has the, the testing past your criteria, that's great. Now the rest of the enterprise comes in, it's Monday morning, and suddenly everyone is using the new software. Uh, this is really the wait and see period. This is where you and your team are prepared for a rapid response and corrections of issues from anyone in the enterprise. Uh, 
You've got, you have to be ready to catch emergencies caused by situations not encountered during testing. And this can include in, an ab, in a really dire situation where your users suddenly come back and say, I can't do my work, the potential to have to roll back up to the previous version of the software, which can involve not only a database restore, but then also and uh, server-side restores to get your software back, but then pushing out, you know, uninstalling the anything that was pushed out to the client machines, and then pushing out the old versions of the software again. It is a real, real hassle. Not something you want to run into. Basically, it's risky, but it can be done. So what we're looking for now is, is a better way. Uh, and we believe the better way is the staged upgrade. Uh, taking one little piece of the pie, one little chunk of the enterprise at a time, and bringing them up to speed so that you don't have to handle everyone at once. Now, obviously, you know, those of you that have been using the system for a while, I'm, I'm sure you're looking at this going, I don't know that that's possible. It, it is, uh, and we'll go into how. <laughs> um, for starters, we're going to look at getting your test system ready for that. So Jen went into actually just making the test system available, you know, getting it caught up and, and ready for anything you need to do with it. Well, here's the whole, here's test with the upgrade. For starters, we're going to, you're going to install a brand new web server slash application server. Uh, not just upgrading the current one, you need to bring up an entirely new box for that. Once that's in place, upgrade the database to the new version, or config, same way you, you always do. Upgrade any of your processing services, thick clients, scheduled stuff, that sort of thing, uh, workflow timers. Uh, phase end users to the new to use of the new software, and again, this is in the test environment. Uh, and then, once you have all the end users in place through testing, uh, and they've signed off on it, retire the old web server. Basically, turn it off. That way, anything that anyone's doing, where they're going to go and hit an app server, for example. Uh, you can guarantee it's hitting the new server instead of the old because the old one's not there anymore. And if they try and make that change, it's just not going to work. The, uh, the focus here isn't so much, at least on the test system side, the phased rollout itself, but the documentation of the process. This is where you're going to find out your quirks, your issues, anything that's likely to arise during the phased upgrade. Uh, and which, by the way, of course, you should be doing with the all-at-once upgrade as well. But keep in mind, little pieces of the pie. This allows you to break it up into bite-sized chunks rather than trying to tackle the entire enterprise at once. Now, just to clarify one point, um, I did. I said earlier that you can test the web client and go to the production web client from the same machine. Uh, on the client side, you can do that, but for the website, this is another one of those areas where the, the server side does not play nicely with multiple instances. So on that end, you get one instance of the server side installation. So that's why you have to have a new web server, because you can either have version 11 or version 10 or you know, whatever version you're on, you only get one. Yeah, which comes back to what Jen was saying with anything off a com common installer. Well, the server-side components count as a common installer. So again, why do we do this? Why do we go through this? Well, this is the, this is the phase I like to call saving our bacon. Uh, the point here is that we are managing risk. You know, any issue that didn't get caught during testing doesn't need to delay the entire enterprise's upgrade process. A business unit that gets affected by a nasty shock can be painlessly rolled back to the old software version without having to roll back everyone and without resulting in costly downtime to the entire organization. Uh, the other perk is uh, man a, a workload management. 
you're looking at a situation where it's not just a matter of how many of our end users can we bring up at once, but how much of our IT staff can we devote to this process at one time? Um, if you're only bringing up HR through the first week or the first couple of days of the upgrade, and then you're going to bring on AP, and then you're going to move on to another business unit, and then another, the same couple of people can manage that workload pretty easily where it can get overwhelming very fast if they're going to try and tackle the entire enterprise. No. So let's look now to production. We've talked about tests. We've talked about why we do this. So what comes about with prod? Well, this is going to look pretty familiar. The exact same set of upgrade steps that we saw with the test environment. This is where your testing, planning, and all that documentation you did earlier really pays off. Your focused upgrade team rolls out the new software, they respond to one business unit at a time, and the normally very stressful post-upgrade process becomes significantly less so. You don't need to worry about getting hit from all sides at once. So what do you need to worry about in this process? Well, we've already hit on the first point. You need a new web and application server. You bring up the new server, you leave the old server running. Uh, components and even thick clients can be pointed for, to one server or the other during the whole process as each department upgrades. Uh, for anything like, let's say, disconnected scanning, application enabler, and, and anything where you you have the ability to set a URL or a uh, a service location, that's that's cake. That's something you can do during the install or just a, a redirect a little bit later. For anything with like a thick client, where that's set in a single location in configuration as to what application server it's going to hit, we have the ability to override that with a switch. So you may need to adjust some folks' shortcuts, but it's pretty easy to push out a shortcut as opposed to, again, pushing out an organization or the software. Uh, why a new server? Well, this is what Ken hit on earlier. Frankly, you just can't have two versions of the core on the same server at the same time. The other major thing you need to worry about, you think about it, you're bringing up a second web server, well, that requires licensing. Uh, Highland is committed to this process and is entirely willing to provide uh, additional licensing, temporary licensing, for that staged upgrade period. Uh, so it's something that you would work out with us. Uh, you, you know, we will figure out your upgrade plan with you, and if, it, if we look and say this is going to take us two months to go through and phase out to the entire organization, we can arrange with Highland for a, again, a, a short-term second web server license, so that you remain in compliance through the entire process. Now, there's a lot that we, we went through, and a lot that we went through rather quickly. Now, everyone's environment is different. Uh, trying to talk about how every piece of the pie can be upgraded and how every little module uh, interacts would be overwhelming and is much more than we can cover in a simple webinar. But we do have a uh, we do have some significant online resources to, to share that can help with this process. The Navient Cafe, uh, which I mentioned earlier, we started in gosh, I think it was September of last year. Uh, so we've now compiled a, a fair amount of articles out there. Uh, mainly at this point, they're focused on OnBase, but uh, we do have other topics uh, of discussion that will be forthcoming. Uh, we've also added a third author to the blog, Keith, who will be focusing on uh, paper type uh, articles. So he's already posted the first of several new series where he's discussing uh, off-site storage. Uh, so uh, that would be a great resource. Actually, uh, a number of the topics that we discussed here are also available in articles on the cafe uh, in, in uh, greater detail. So that would be a good reference for you as well. And the Highland community uh, is another great resource. 
They used to have users.onbase.com. It is being replaced by the Highland community. I think users.onbase is still online, but it's going away very, very soon. So I would switch to the community if you have not already. And if you haven't checked out the community, there is a ton of useful information. It's a it's an environment where customers, end users, resellers, and Highland experts themselves all gather and can discuss the various products and modules. Uh, there is a specific community for test environments. There's an upgrade community. There's even an incremental parallel upgrade process community. A lot, a lot to see and a lot of great information to share. And now we will open it for questions. Wow, did we really see it all? <laughs> and we're good. Well, certainly, folks, uh, if you have anything you'd like to ask uh, that we can address right now, Feel free and enter it in. Uh, otherwise, as we'll mention in a minute, you certainly do have the ability to get a hold of us afterwards to ask anything that may come to mind. OK, uh, it looks like we're going to have a fairly short webinar today. No time for the flow papers. <laughs> current versions of the software on base service pack 2 was released yesterday so if you are planning an upgrade in the near future and I know a couple of you are because I have projects with you um, I just uploaded the files this morning to move it so the sick client is now on 11.02.594 and the core is on 11.02.161 uh, Copex Capture is still on version 10.0. VRF is on Elite SP1, and Teleforms is on Elite 5. Okay, and for any questions that you have after this webinar is over, please feel free to contact us at 1-800-686-8789, or you can email us at support at navient-inc.com. Or if you go to the Navient website, there are also links to the live chat. And there is a, an email submission form there as well, where you can submit emails by that method. The next webinar is scheduled for May 17th, which is a Thursday. And the next conference will be October 22nd and 23rd, again in Wisconsin Dells. Yep. For those that didn't have a chance to attend last time, it was a great time. Uh, very, very useful sessions, training, uh, conference, and some, some great breakout sessions on, on the conference day. I highly recommend and encourage anyone to attend. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Oh, hey, that's right. I forgot. Uh, we, we, we decided that since there was some bacon in the theme today, we were going to share a little bit. Uh, a, a recipe for a, a delicious treat you can make as long as you aren't entirely concerned about how healthy you are. Uh, Apples are healthy. Of course they are. A little something that, that we've dubbed the abomination pie. You take your, you can get yourself a nice frozen apple pie or bake one if you like. Just you want to make sure it's nice and cold before you uh, you do anything with it. You put a nice lattice of bacon across the top, uh, and then you bake it. By the time that pie is nice and piping hot, the bacon has all cooked on top. It gives a wonderful smoky flavor to that pie. Uh, and has been an absolute hit every time it's been it's been shared. Like I said, if you're counting calories, fat, or cholesterol at the slightest in any way, shape, or form, uh, regard for your own health, this is perhaps not the treat for you. But there you go. Enjoy. Thanks for attending, everybody. Uh,
we look forward to working with you soon.